Hey, what's up, YouTube? Grotha here. So I'm bringing you guys yet another update to the Frostbolt Ice Silver build. Uh, today I'm going to talk about some of my Atlas strategies and some of the crafting with the mechanic. There's not too much has changed with the build. I'll quickly go over some of the things I'm changing and some of the things I'm going for. Um, you might see that I'm still using a shield. This is because I just haven't really crafted a really good second wand yet. I'll go over how I crafted this one specifically in a minute here. So that's currently what I'm going for my gear. Uh, I also want to craft better boots for Void. Right now, I'm not actually a to ailment yet. I'll probably end up running a Storm Shroud or an Essential Vision. I'm still using Hyperthermia over Intensify. Now, Hyperthermia distills better for overlapping, and mapping distills better. You get the Caster Mastery, you get Cast Speed for each non-instant spellcast. This is very strong. Um, you wouldn't be able to take this if you're going Intensify, because you want the other intensity. Actually, maybe you could take this mastery still over the extra intensity. I'm not quite sure. I haven't really tested that, but it could be an option. I'm still using Punishment. A lot of people keep asking me why I'm not using Conductivity. I quickly want to talk about the Conductivity versus Punishment stuff. Now, if you go Punishment, you use Invert. And the big thing about Invert is it's actually quite a bit better against really high res rares. The main downside of Conductivity is it has this thing where if you run into like a 200 res rare, you're really going to be doing no damage to it. But if you're invert, you're going to be doing a lot of damage 25% of the time. You end up being a lot stronger against rare monsters and maps. Um, bosses, connectivity is probably slightly better. But punishment does more damage when the boss is lower. And punishment also has a damage reduction component. It has the ability to debilitate enemies when they hit you. Debilitate is a 10% less damage dealt. Debuff, so it is actually quite nice defensively. Now, one big advantage of connectivity is it has chance of shock. Chance of shock might not sound good, but chance of shock is actually quite nice. Um, this build doesn't really have that much shock chance, so sometimes on bosses you just won't feel the shock right away. And connectivity does end up being a bit more damage on bosses. You also get the exposure mastery instead, and you run connectivity that way. I see the damage. It's actually lower, but that's because I have low life on. Punishment becomes a little better on low life, but overall, connectivity probably does more damage. That's everything I want to talk about with the curses. The Parandus Jewel. Now, Parandus Jewel is insane. This comes from the Lee mechanic. I will quickly go over how to craft it. The Parandus Pack. So, this jewel is a random jewel that you can craft from the Parandus family. Now, the way you craft this jewel is by combining all four of the Parandus families. The family corpses. It can roll a variety of stats. It can roll life, mana, crit, tribute, fizz, chaos, fire, cold, lightning, chaos, armor, evasion, yes. It sounds like a lot and it sounds like it's random, but you actually can make it force roll into mana. And why is this good? Because it adds a lot. It's not showing on PUB right now, but it adds my build 180 flat mana. You might be wondering how it's adding that much because it's only adding 5 mana per node and we don't have that many nodes. It actually stacks with Unnatural Instinct. You see it hits all these nodes in the middle here. Unnatural Instinct takes these nodes, and you get the benefit of both at the same time. It's actually quite insane. You're getting a lot of mana from it. You can look at the config here. I'm getting 180 flat mana. This is what I'm getting in-game. It's not showing in PUB, but this gives me about 1,000 mana. Pretty crazy. In order to craft this, you're going to be looking to block everything, and they're going to make the mana more likely. Now, I only did one Scarce on each of those. And I did like four increase on mana. But you probably, I'm not sure if it's guaranteed with one. You might want to do one, you might want to do two if you want to be safe. I'm not quite sure like what the exact number would be. I kind of just did it and one worked. But I don't want to like recommend it and then it fails for somebody. So that's kind of what I would recommend. So I did actually craft my helmet and my wand from the Lee mechanic. I'm going to talk about the helmet first. The way I crafted the helmet is by reducing the amount of mods the item could roll. I reduced it from 4 to 3, and then I made it so it had a 200% chance to fracture. This is important because I wanted to get a fractured haunted mod. The mod I wanted was 1 int, or sorry, 1 mana per 2 int. I didn't actually get it. It's a haunted modifier, and it's also a mana modifier. So I upped the haunted chance by quite a bit, and I upped the mana chance by quite a bit. I did end up getting a haunted modifier though. I got the mana generate fractured, which is also a haunted modifier. It's not bad, but it's not really what I wanted. I'll probably try to recraft the helm at some point. I also did like a bunch of scarcer and stuff, but it doesn't really matter too much. You're mostly just going for mana and haunted and like making some of the other ones less likely. That's the general idea with the helmet. 
The wand is a little more in depth. It's basically like a bunch of increased caster, one increased mana, and then a lot less on elemental modifiers, gem modifiers, and crit modifiers. I'm going to post the exact wand craft link in the description in my PUB. Um, but yeah, that's gen the general idea is that. You also want a 1100 tier rating. This is important for the wand to actually guarantee roll T1 mana. This is what I got. I got fractured 32 cast speed. The wand itself was actually pretty bad. I crafted three of them and got a couple of good ones, a couple like three T1 prefixes, but with like sun duration fractured and like prod speed fractured. So it didn't really turn out very well for me. I'm gonna try to craft another one and that'll be the general idea I do. I think going for fractures is a nice idea because then you can recraft it if you do hit a good one. That's kind of what happened with my wand. That's how I've been crafting my gear. I do want to quickly talk about the Atlas stuff. I'll go over that real quick. This build has been really strong and like everything I've done with it. Okay, so let's get into the Atlas strategies I've been doing and also what this character's strong at. First off, like everything I've pretty much done on this character has been super strong. I've tried out a lot of different lead mechanics and I really haven't struggled with any of them. I think whatever you want to do would probably work with the sub character. Now that being said, Legion was a little bit annoying. I think with Val Isa it would be a lot better. It wasn't like I couldn't clear the Legion, it just was my least favorite. It might also be because Legion's been changed a bit. I just didn't prefer Legion. I would prefer something like Breach, or like Abyss, or something like that would be better, I think, for this type of character. Now, what am I doing exactly on my trees now? So, I've basically been doing a Destructive Play Atlas. The idea with this type of Atlas is getting as many Conqueror maps as possible. And it has worked really well with that. You get a lot of maps. So many maps. I have 50 T17s. I have 260 T16s. I have 77 Guardian maps. I had like 150 yesterday, but I was spamming them all day. So I'm down to a, a, like half of what I had. And the other thing you're really getting with this tree are Orb of Conflicts. You're getting Watcher's Eyes. Like loads of Watcher's Eyes. Loads of Awakened Gems. Honestly, most of my currency this league has been from Awakened Gems. You get so many. Now, if you're in Softcore, I'm not sure how good this is exactly. But it's really, really good in hardcore. And I like the strategy a lot. We also get some scarabs. I'm taking the unique monster shop scarabs with a combination of rogue exiles. And we're also taking unending torment. This adds some spirits. They also drop scarabs. And yeah, this works really well together. You might notice I'm taking all the necropolis nodes as well. This is because I like the craft. I've been crafting my gear with the limb mechanic. And I think it's really strong. These nodes are quite nice. For the nodes, you want to add as many monsters to the map as possible to spawn more corpses. And Ritual is really good at that. Ritual and Shrine especially. Shrine adds more monsters. Ritual adds more monsters. Uh, Shaw monsters are also pretty good. I don't think they really add uh, Necropolis monsters, but they're just good at adding Scarab drops and stuff. Shaw monsters are pretty strong as well. Just in general, those are like really strong mechanics this league. Now for my Rituals, I don't really full clear the Ritual or like do the Ritual mechanic itself. I just add it for the monsters. If you're going full in on Ritual, you want to take the nodes that actually apply to the reroll stuff and add four Rituals to the map. That's going to be pretty strong, honestly. I, I think Ritual is definitely a little underrated. This takes a while to do. So I don't think a lot of people like to do it. Also, on this tree, we're taking Pack of Energy. I don't think I really need this, but it does give us a lot of move speed. It takes a lot of points, though, so I'm considering dropping it. My character is also super strong, so I don't really need it. But I currently have it. I'm also taking the Shaping the Mountains and Shaping the Skies. This really isn't for the actual special crafts or anything, but it adds a lot of map drops. And like I said, this Alice is based around getting maps and doing them fast. This is my go-to Alice right now. I do have a couple more Alices though. I'm currently testing out Harbinger. Harbinger is... Actually, before I go on, move on here, I do want to talk about some of the Scarabs. So in general, I don't really do that many Scarab strats, but you get a lot of Scarabs with the trees I'm using, so I do self-sustain, and I throw in a couple Scarabs occasionally. There's not many Scarabs there right now, I don't really sell them, I just use them myself. Generally, I like to throw in, like, the random garbage ones occasionally, like Shawn Moxes, if I have Shawn Mox nodes, Shrines, Abyss, Delirium, like, all these are pretty good, right? Like, map drops. Specifically for the map Atlas, I like to use the Shrine ones, like, the Shrines are guarded by Atlas bosses, that's really good. You can add that with map dupe and like increase maps and more shrines. Pretty good combination there. If you need maps, this is the way to go. That's the idea of that tree. Now for this tree, I'm focusing on Harbinger. Harbinger and strong boxes. Again, I have the Scarab nodes. I think the Scarab nodes are a lot better now, especially like the Amplified Artifacts and Significant Troves. These nodes are pretty impactful. I definitely noticed having them. 
This tree goes a bit further and takes Seance for the up to five rare monsters possessed. And Rogue Exiles again. You guys see a theme here. I'm taking a lot of the same notes. We're also taking the Lust Variety Syrup stuff. Shawn boxes. I think I might add Ritual to this tree or try to. But we're also running Shrines as well. And again, almost every tree I have is running all the Necropolis nodes. I just think they're worth running. Like, you get corpses, you craft with them, the crafting's OP. Just adds more modifiers to your maps. I think they're really strong, so I'm taking them in every tree right now. Then we have this tree here. As you can see by the name, I was running Syndicate initially, early on. Syndicate's still pretty good for league starting. Um, you get a lot of gear, and you need the crafts anyways. It's, it's nice, but... Yeah, I did 15 Katarinas, and I didn't see a single Veiled Orb. So, yeah, Katarina is a little bit annoying now. It's good XP. It's good early on. Your vicious and transportation is pretty good. People like to say you get a lot of scarabs from sending it, but I actually notice I get less scarabs from sending it because I'm spending more time doing, like, the like, safe houses and stuff. It just, I end up getting less scarabs, even though, like, it's the scarab mechanic. I'm getting less than this normally mapping. So I respect this tree. Um, it's mostly just adding monsters, like Eater, Shadow Moxes, Ritual. This is just the general, like, MFing Alice, I guess. It's just adding a lot of stuff. And we're adding, like, the ghosts as well. This is the tree I run if I want to, like, juice up a map. Adds a lot of extra monsters, which is good for corpses and good for, like, this MFing, I guess, in general. I will actually always use a craft here. Generally, I'm doing, like, Domination, or if I'm doing Harvey, I'm doing Harvey. Well, MFing, I'm doing, like, Ambush. Not overcomplicating it, just usually just throwing in stuff I find myself. That's everything I wanted to talk about. I'll link in my description, in my POB, the stuff I've been doing this league, and all the informations, and all my trees. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys next time.